started uh, last week uh, looking at Joshua a little bit as we looked uh, last Sunday morning at uh, the manner in which leadership changed, how that Moses had passed away, that God himself had buried him. Nobody knew where he buried him. And he went up on that mountain and he died and was buried. And God told Joshua, get up and do what I'm giving you to do. It's now your turn. Uh, you're uh, to lead this people. Uh, you are to take them across the Jordan. You are to, to divide the inheritance. You're to do all of these things. And then looking into uh, uh, the way that they sent two spies into the land that we know of going into Jericho in town in the home of Rahab and she uh, gave them protection and, uh, and let them down through a window and uh, that they might go and, uh, and as a result uh, was promised safety for those that would be in her home at the time that the battle takes place. So now we're come to uh, getting ready for that. And Israel is camped a little ways away, about five uh, miles or more away from the edge of Jordan. And now they're getting ready to come up close to that. We're talking about a huge group of people. We're talking about more than a million. We're talking about a lot of people that's going to have to be coming over this particular place. So we read what it says uh, beginning at the first of Joshua chapter 3. It says, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and was there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests of the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now, it's been a long wait, but they've been waiting. It's been a long time coming, but they are now ready to go into the land. Now, it's hard for us, I guess, to wait or to hold up or to do any of those things. We tend to, uh, we, we live in a very uh, quick society. We live in a, uh, we want our meals to be so quick, we, we microwave them in a hurry. Uh, we do everything we can to get them done quick. When we go to town, we want to park it, we want to get there as quickly as possible and do everything we want as quickly as we can. We don't like standing in line when we go to the grocery store, we don't like it when there's three or four more in front of us. I know because I, I just went to the grocery store on Thursday and I had four in front of me and I was ready to get out of there. Okay, we, we were kind of that way just a little bit, you know. But uh, as we look at this, we recognize a couple of things that he's talking about. He's talking about going when God gets ready for you to go. He's talking about doing it when God is ready. Now, you know, a lot of times we're ready to do, we're ready to, to move, we want to, this to happen and that to happen and whatever, but uh, uh, the first thing they had to do was wait on the Lord. Now, you know, the way they've been doing this for 40 years is significant. You see, when the cloud began to move, they followed it. When it stopped, they stopped. When there was a pillar of fire at night that was moving, they were moving. But when the pillar of fire stopped, they stopped. They followed all the time where God led and what God told them to do. Now, you know, at this point in time, things are beginning to change. 
things are going to be different than they've ever been before. They've been following that cloud for 40 years, but now he said, tells them to follow the Ark of the Covenant, to recognize as God is moving. Now, you know, several years ago we had a, a program that came out that was involved in a, a book study. It's, it's kind of a neat book study. I believe it was uh, from the Blackaby Brothers, and in it, it spoke about something that they probably took from this particular place in Scripture to begin with. The title of it and everything about it, but as they talked about it, the one thing that they said is, when you see the Lord moving, then you move. And that was a, and that's good advice. And that's, that's, that's a good thing to consider and talk about. He, what they said over and over again was, when you see what God is doing, join Him in what He's doing. And that's what we often need to do. We need to recognize that when God is, you know, what we want to do so often, the, we, when we talk to God in prayer sometimes, when we are involved in things, we, we tend to want to tell God what to do. And that's not where it's at. Okay? We don't tell God what to do. God tells us what to do. They were listening to what God said. They were going where God told them to go. They were doing what God told them to do. Now, you know, Joshua told them, and uh, he, had, he had sent his people out through the group. Now, recognize the way that Israel, Israel always had a certain way that they, they camped. They had... Uh, they had a certain place where the Ark of the Covenant was. They had a certain place where the temple was. They had a certain place for each of the tribes. And they were separated according to their tribe. And they were in where God told them. And when they came out to travel, they came out and traveled in that particular way. The first tribe to go forward. The second tribe to go forward. And each of them came out and followed in exactly the way that they were told to do. Now... In this instance, the people that were the leaders in each of the tribes went around and they told them, when you see the ark begin to move, you follow him. When you see God moving, you follow him. And that's good advice today as well. That's important today as well. That, that ark was the symbol of the Lord's presence. That ark was to... to uh, to make them recognize that God was with them. That ark was a part of all of that. And it became very significant as, as Joshua told them what it is that they were to do in preparing and getting ready and everything that has to do with that. He told the priest, he said, you're, you know, you're going to carry uh, the ark. You're going to move and you go down and you put your feet in the water. Now, you know, it's an interesting thing the way things were back uh, when they left Egypt, back when they uh, were taken out of bondage, back when they left the sin behind, back when they were became God's people, back when they were uh, those that were uh, uh, given freedom, when they came to the waters, and uh, the Bible says that, that Moses lifted up that that uh, uh, staff and that the nostrils of God that they blew all night long that they was that he dried up the ground where they were at and that when they went in then uh, they walked over on dry ground and they got to the other side and then when Moses lifted up the the, the, the staff again the waters came in and it roared over the Egyptians that were following them through the dry area, and uh, so they were. They put all that behind them. This is a different situation. You know, they were leaving behind those things, but out in front of them was basically the wilderness, the place where they were going to get to the place that God told them to go. Now they're in this situation. They are facing an enemy. They are. They know what is ahead of them. They know there's some things that are out there that are going to take place. That there's going to be a battle, and the things. It's a whole, totally different situation. But God has said, "I'm going with you. I'm going to be there. I will fight your battles." And these are the things 
that you have to trust for and what all of those things and so he says uh, he says to them uh, as he as he speaks to them that he said when you put your feet in the water okay then this is what's going to happen okay then the water is going to stop and it's going to build up into a heap and it's going to and it's going to uh, and and we'll go across on dry ground. Now, we talked about this Jordan already just a little bit. The Jordan at this particular time is in the, in the time of harvest when the water overflows, when, when a place that's about a, a, a hundred feet wide mo normally is suddenly a mile wide. That's what we're talking about. Now, you know, it's easy for us to kind of imagine this because this morning we're having a long, uh, next to the road, I looked and saw a creek that's about, you know, yay wide that uh, covered from the edge of the road all the way over about, well, to the edge of the hillside, okay? And it's easy to understand that just a little bit. You see, that's what the situation was. Now, you know, we, uh, uh, the, the difference in one time a year and another was uh, tremendous. And... When we're looking at Jordan right now, it's a mile wide. It's it's huge. It's it's uh, you know, and to take a million people across that, well, to begin with, you couldn't build a route big enough. Okay, you ain't got time to build a bridge. You know, you're uh, and God brought them there intentionally at that time of year that they might trust Him that they might understand that he was the one that was delivering, that he was the one that was doing, that they may have a reason to recognize and know the truth about who they were following. Now, he said to them, you pay attention now, don't get ahead of the, uh, you know, we, we tend to want to get ahead of God a little bit, just a little bit, do things in a certain kind of way. He says, he said, you stay 2,000 feet back. He said, don't, don't get ahead of God. Don't, uh, you know, that, uh, you, you're going to follow Him. You're going to respect who He is. You're going to uh, give all to Him. I, as I was reading and studying this, one of the people I was studying after uh, said it this way, we're looking at God and we're thinking about God. We can't think about God like He's our buddy. He's God Almighty. He's the creator of the universe. He's the one that, that, made all of the things that are around us. He is, uh, he deserves honor and praise and glory and we, and we need to understand that. It's not a, you know, we, uh, uh, and so he tells them, he tells them this, but he tells them one thing that's important. He says, sanctify yourselves because tomorrow you're going to see wonders. You're going to see what God's going to do. And you know, we're talking about sanctifying them, themselves. What does it mean uh, when we talk about that? He says, you need to sanctify yourself because you hadn't been here before. This is, this is new to you. Everything about it is new. Is it, you grew up in a different kind of setup, in a different situation, and now there's something that you've got to be involved in doing. So, uh, sanctifying is a separation from uh, the things of the past, from the world, from, you know, uh, there's a scripture that says, uh, in, uh, in Ephesians, it says this. It says in uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 22, that you put off concerning the former conversation, lifestyle, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. He said, separate yourself to God. You know, see that, when we talk about uh, sanctification. Uh, it's a word that means uh, separated unto God. It's a word that speaks about uh, uh, getting rid of the old and putting on the new. It's a it's a word that means holiness. It's a word that means uh, well belonging to God in reality. And so he says, you ain't been here before. You need to follow the one uh, that can take you where you need to go. And uh, he says, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. And he tells Joshua this. He says, he said, tomorrow I'm going to magnify you in, in the 
eyes of these people. And and so, you know, Joshua goes down. He tells them, put your foot in the water. Now, you know, uh, I, I like a song that says, you know, oh, what I would do to have the kind of faith it takes to stand before a giant with just slinging a stone and uh, to get out of the boat I'm in and stand on the water. You know, well, they had to have that kind of faith. They had to, uh, when they, uh, he said, go down and uh, to the water and put your feet in the water, and and then the water is going to do. It, it wasn't like it was in, in Egypt. See, he, he raised that staff and, and the, the, the wind of the Lord blew all night long until there was dry ground there. And when they got ready, it was already dry. Now he's saying, go down and put your foot where it's wet. And then it'll get dry. So there had to be some faith that's involved in that. Now, you know, I, 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 like, uh, uh, I like what one person said about this and talking about this. And they, and, uh, they, said, it, they said it this way. He said... Their faith wasn't a passive feeling. This is Wearsby that said this. He says, he said it was an active force. Uh, and then he goes into detail about a couple of things. He says, because Abraham believed God, he left Ur and headed for Canaan. Because Moses believed God, he defied the gods of Egypt and led the Jews to freedom. Because Gideon believed God, he led a small band of Jews to defeat the huge Midianite army. Uh, living faith always leads to action. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also, as it says in James 2, 26. You see, when God says move, you move, and it's not faith in nothing, it's faith in the word of God. It's trusting what God said. It's taking God at his word. It's doing what God told you to do. Here they are. Uh, they're on the brink, and they're, uh, and uh, he says, so that you might know that God will indeed do what he said, pay attention to what he's doing right now. Pay attention to what he's about ready to do. And so when they step their feet into the, into the water, you know what happened? The water stopped flowing way up several miles up above there next to a city called Adam. Boy, it's an interesting thing that it's called that. Okay. The water stopped flowing down and it dried up and they were to stand there until all the people went through. With that piled up way back up there where it was at They were to stand there and trust God until everybody got through. Then they were to go across. Those priests who were standing on dry ground after they put their feet in. That you may know, he said, that the Lord will indeed drive them out from before you. That God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Pay attention. And this is what happened. The water dried up. There was a number of places in the Bible where the waters were parted for people to walk through. Elijah and Elisha both walked up through on dry ground too. And Jesus walked on top of the water. You know, when we look at these things, this wasn't an exact repeat performance because this was a different situation. It required their faith to stand there on the edge of that water. And they were on dry ground until all had passed. And he tells them, he says, that the Lord will be with you every step of the way. And he will indeed drive out the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Ammonites. Am, uh, uh, well, every one of those names. There's a bunch of, bunch of names there that he speaks about. And he tells them about Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Gergesites. Amorites, Jebusites, all of those he speaks about. And it says, he told them, take 12 men out of the tribes, one out of every tribe, and when this happens, then I've got something else I want you to do. We're going to talk about that in the fourth chapter. 
And he says, uh, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, boy, now this is important. See, he doesn't he doesn't mince words on this. He says he calls them first of all uh, uh, the God of the Israelites. And then he calls that them the Lord of all the earth, the Lord that has power over every tribe and every nation and every people and can go where he pleases and do what he wants to do. This one we're talking about. And he says, uh, shall cut off the waters that come down from above and they shall stand upon a heap. And so it says, and as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of water for Jordan overfloweth his banks all the time of harvest. We're talking in verse 15. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose upon a heap very far from the city of Adam that it and is beside Zeretan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, every one of the streams and all the waters and everything else, it just stopped. Okay? were cut off, the salt sea failed, and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. He says, until all had passed, until the job was done, until everything needed to take place had taken place. He says, well, basically what it amounts to is all of these things, when you see the Lord moving, when you see God doing something, when you recognize that He is doing something in your life or the life of your church or your people, Join him in what he's doing. Don't try to tell him what to do. Listen to what he says and follow him. And do what he gives you to do. That's what he told the Israelites. And he still tells us that. And I like that thing that I was talking about, the Blackaby brothers, uh, when they were talking about it. When you see what God is doing, Join him in what he's doing, and he'll bless you. And he told Israel that he would bless them because they obeyed, they trusted, and they obeyed, and they accomplished. And it says later on, as we'll see, that none of those nations were able to stand before them because God was on their side. It's true today as well. When you trust Him and you follow Him and you're on His side, then things get done and you get blessed. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank You for these words and these scriptures. We thank You for a people that trusted and stepped into the water. And we thank You for what You did for them and showing them the reality of who you are, that they may trust and believe and follow and know that it, you will indeed do what you said you would. And Lord, we stand here knowing that you will do everything that you have promised and everything that you have said. And we know that you never leave and you never forsake, but you go with us every step of the way. Lord, I pray that if there's a need here now, if there's one that needs Jesus, I pray that even now they would trust Him, follow Him, even this day, in Jesus' name.